we've now seen all the building blocks necessary to start using while loops and problems. In particular, we're going to tr start trying to combine while loops with for loops in whatever configuration we can think of, and also try to combine while loops with while loops and see what happens as these things get intermixed with what we've studied previously. So the thing we've always done in the past is we've started by analyzing the innermost loop. We did this before by analyzing the innermost summation. However, first we're going to try to analyze the innermost loop. In this case, the innermost loop looks like a while loop. So we know from our previous couple of videos that we analyze while loops by creating this iteration table. So my variable for my while loop here, I need to be careful, is j. So the variable that I write in that column is j. j is initialized to be i, and then we update j by dividing by 3. So after one iteration, j should be i divided by 3. After two iterations, it's i divided by 3 divided by 3, which is i divided by 3 squared. After three iterations, it's i divided by 3 cubed. After k iterations, it looks like i divided by 3 to the k. And now I need to find out when does that expression, i divided by 3 to the k, equal the stopping condition of the while loop, exactly like we saw when we had just a while loop in the problem. So this code will stop when i divided by 3 to the k is equal to the stopping condition, which in this case is 1. And remember, that's just an approximation, but a pretty damn good one. We multiply by 3 to the k, and we have i equals 3 to the k. We take a log base 3 of both sides and get k equals log base 3 of i. So that tells me how many times does the while loop run. If we look at the code, the cost of each run is constant. So the cost of the code I highlighted in purple there is the number of runs times the cost. So it's a constant cost times the number of runs. So the purple code takes C log base 3 of i time. If that was the only thing we had, that would be our runtime. However, that is sandwiched inside of a for loop, and we know how to analyze for loops. For loops, we analyze via summations. So t of n I'm going to express as a summation. So t of n is equal to a sum from i equals 1 to n of c log base 3 of i. And now we have a summation to analyze. This is much more familiar territory for us. We can now analyze the summation by bounding it above and below. So let's work on that. We need to bound this above. Bound above. To bound it above, we're going to take the summation and replace each term with the maximum that occurs. So we replace log base 3 of i with log base 3 of n. We've now eliminated i from the summation. So we can then simplify it. And we write this as n times c log base 3 of n. One thing that can help sometimes to make sure we know what we're doing is we can label our steps. So in this first step, we are replacing each term with the max. In that next step, we are simplifying the sum because i no longer appeared inside of the sum. So simplify sum. And therefore, we can take the sum and c log base 3 of n and multiply by the number of terms. So with those two things done, we can now see hopefully that that is in big O of n log n. So t of n is in big O of n log n. And now we need to bound below. To bound this below, we're going to split the summation in half. So bound below. We have t of n. When we split it in half, we keep the larger half. So for my original sum, I'm going to change the bottom bound to n divided by 2 plus 1 to n of c log base 3 of i. And what we've done there is we've split the sum in half and kept the larger half. So split sum in half plus keep the larger half. Splitting in half isn't sacred. I wrote that here, but in general, we're just splitting the sum and keeping the larger of the two. In this case, it, it was actually in half, but that doesn't need to be the case. We then replace 
i with the smallest value. So we replace i with n over 2 plus 1. In practice, we actually just replace it with n over 2. So we replace i with n over 2. And that's replace each value with min. Each value with min. And now we no longer have i inside of the summation. So for all intents and purposes, that is a fixed quantity. We take that fixed quantity and multiply by the number of terms in the summation. The number of terms in this summation is the top minus bottom plus one, which on purpose simplifies to n over two. You can compute that if you want, but we knew that because we designed it to do that. So this is n divided by two times c log base three of n divided by two. And now we've done this a couple of times. We can replace that n divided by two with radical n. So we have c n over two times log base three of n to the one half. And then we can bring the one half out front and write that as c n over four times log base three of n. And we again, we've seen that a couple of times in the past already, where we can replace a tedious fraction of n with a smaller power of n. We also, in bounding above, can do the same thing with replacing it with a higher power of n. This allows us to simplify very nicely. So my final thing here is going to be that t of n is in big omega of n log n, which is good because it was in big O of that. Thus, it's in big O and big omega of the same thing. So it's in theta of that thing. So let's try and squeeze that in here so we can finish our problem. So thus, t of n is in theta of n log n. And when you look at this problem, hopefully you say, well, that was pretty much just doing one thing followed by the other, which is good. The reason is that when you have a while loop inside of a for loop, things tend to be rather easy, it turns out because you can analyze the while loop on its own and it doesn't really cause any complications. The converse, where we switch the while loop and the for loop, is not so good, we will see. So this example, you analyze the while loop, it's nice and easy because the inside is likely going to take constant time, and then you can just analyze the resulting summation exactly like we did in previous videos. We will soon see how switching the while loop to being on the outside can cause a lot of things to go slightly awry. We'll have to figure out how we can deal with that.